Hey, it's time for another 90 Day Fiance recap chat. This time it's 90 Day Fiance the other way. 90 Day Fiance is a reality show that follows couples, one from the U.S., one from another country. It shows their trials, their tribulations, their relationship issues. On top of that, cultural boundaries, um, language barriers, and trying to get that marriage license, the 90 day K-1 visa. It is a 90 day fiance. This time, this spinoff is called The Other Way. All right, Shekinah and Sarper. Sarper has a past being somewhat of a womanizer. He's trying to now commit to Shekinah and they've had some ups and downs, but things are seeming to go better. So what is better than getting a nose job? I think this is the perfect time to do that. Why not? Um, I think this is her third nose job. She said the third time hopefully is a charm. And you know what? Surprise, Sarper's going to be designing her new nose. Um, the surgeon has no problem with him, you know, showcasing what he wants. He's like, can I come that day? He's like, well, you're going to get in our way. Don't actually try to do the surgery for us, okay? Um, he said, well, this is the nose I'm going to see all day, so I better design it. He kisses the old nose goodbye. They learn some information before surgery. Ner Sarper's like more nervous than she is. I think the surgery's about three hours, so he's just worried. Hopefully everything will come out fine. But this is her third time, so I guess she's not really stunning it, so to speak. Um, she says, you know, this also will be a learning lesson for Sarper to see if he'll be able to take care of her after this recovery period. So before the surgery, they're told that she can't wash her face or brush her teeth for a week and no bedroom time for them for a month and he's like 7200 hours baby how does he count the hours he is really into counting though i do remember that she said they're like well can we work our way around that bedroom issue and she's like he, and she was like well if he's doing all the work and i'm not exerting anything can we still do something and then md um, attending young lady says as so long as you don't do anything with your face and you make sure your blood pressure doesn't go up too high so then yeah so she kind of like yeah we're not the couple that can hold things off for a month we can't we just can't do that so i'm like why not you guys can't hold it for a month i mean i'm glad you aren't having kids together because there may be multiple months you'd have to wait in between waiting for your child to be delivered or whatnot or if there's complications you know you're gonna have to wait during some scenarios in life and you can't do one month then hmm. they said is there some work around things we can do i mean i can understand the work around things and i think that some more couples should think about the work around things at times where they're not able to participate participate in the bedroom for health issues or whatever i think it's a good idea to think about some alternatives if you are a couple and you're in a marriage but i just question why they can't wait for a month i'm sorry and she says it like it's a fun a good thing that they can't wait i think you need to have a little bit more substance in your relationship and I mean, I may be a little bit um, harsh on them. There may be other couples that feel this way. That's fine. But, you know, I feel like sometimes you do have to wait for whatever things are going on in your life. You should have a better foundation in your relationship. If you can't do one month, then you guys both kind of have issues. And I see why, so why Sarper is the way he is going from person to person you know if you have that mentality where you can't wait with a month in, in a good decent relationship that you're trying to work towards like how are you going to do that in the beginning of a new relationship how are you going to forge a new relationship um sometimes people get into relationships just so that they can have the bedroom part and you know that's that's not healthy at the end of the day so I guess it's great to have a healthy libido, but when it's time to take a rest, 
uh, you should be able to control yourself and find other ways to um, I'll use the word stimulate each other there's other ways to stimulate each other besides bedroom things okay now we're off of that and what do you guys think about this whole scenario why I just didn't like that I was just like we, we're just not the couple that can't wait we can't wait one month like okay and that's a good thing your thoughts email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com or drop your thoughts in the comments but let's go to joanne and sean at this point you know the kids are surprised about the two years as well as her friend noel that they've been married in their secret marriage and you know she's um they're all there with sean her husband that they just found out was the husband and her i think her older son is taking it probably the hardest and he's like you know dad's our dad's like 45 minutes away you know and she's like well you have your grandparents there's other people around and um he's like well what if my brother wants to come up here he's like well he can come he's like well what does that leave me alone is everything going to be on me looking out for my little brother like he he brings up some good questions and noelle is kind of not sure even really how to answer all these questions but she does let him know it's a work in progress and we're still trying to figure things out and she's going to try to accommodate them but at this time they're going home she's staying there on in ireland with her new husband and her new stepdaughter so um, that's how the scenario is going they all hug and have a nice little goodbye but before they do that you know sean's asking you know how do you feel about me kind of on the way home i'm sorry on the way to the airport and joey um the older son he you know he honestly speaks from his mind and says you know he does it respectfully but he's like he's still trying to process the scenario you guys have been married for two years and you know he just airs out his issues with the situation so he does it respectfully so there's no you know i see no problem with that but they all have a uh amicable goodbye and you know they're just gonna try to figure things out from this point forward i do wish them the best um i think sean says he doesn't regret the marriage but he just regrets waiting two years to tell them because it, that seems like the worst part for the family involved all right let's go to lily and josh okay they hit that night market where lily does say they have snakes there but no she means snacks but they actually have a lot of street food there a lot of different chinese dishes so it's definitely not just a snack bar it does give me a little bit of eatery vibe and street food so it's like looks like a lot of different street vendors on the street in the dark and, you know other people are out there at the night it's like a little party and then you look like you can go inside and then there's more um options to eat and you have somewhere to sit and eat you know the things you've chosen and she wants the pair of soup uh josh it seems like he's unsure about the pair of soup but her brother-in-law jared says i'll try it too and i love the way how she just says yummy yummy it was kind of cute uh, then the next thing i see is a squid on a stick so uh, i'm not sure i think i was at a chinese um so I think it was all you can eat and then I saw like some octopus or something like that and I was like uh no thank you so for the squid and then it'll be a pass for me and I'm also allergic to seafood so I don't know if I would fare well at the night market uh, but Jared is still mediating them between their relationship their unhappy issues the financial grief that she seems like she continues to give him and Jared is just trying to figure out what's at the bottom of this. He's like, well, okay, let's try to resolve this so we can enjoy the rest of this night market. Um, she says, you know, out of everything, you know, she's not real big on the financial issue. She doesn't care if he's rich or poor, but she puts love first and she wants to feel loved. And she feels like he's just not providing that feeling for her. And then, you know, Jared's like, well he also has an issue with you keep bringing up how much money that uh, you're spending on him do you want him to provide is that an issue for you 
and she's like she just wants him to be grateful and show gratitude uh, not that she you know is upset about the fact she has to do these things but she wants to do these things and you know Jared brings up a good point saying that that's her love language and their love languages have been switched concerning man and woman in the traditional male and female roles that her love language is actually buying items and, and being the provider and his is supposedly more emotional but she wants to feel that he appreciates all of the things she's doing for him so that's her issue she doesn't feel appreciated and he wants to he really feels more emotional i don't think he cares about the items more or less he feels like he wants to have emotional connection he does say that he's sensitive and lily lets us know that the daughter will be coming so she's going to be getting involved and there's an issue between him and the daughter so we'll see more about that but in the meantime jerry gets them to kiss and make up i know josh still had a funny look on his face um i don't know when she said that she loved him and all of that and she was saying some sweet things to me i felt like he could have kissed her in that moment and you know and said you know you don't feel love well i'm sorry honey and kiss her but he's just sitting there looking funny and upset and i just feel like they should capitalize or he should have capitalized on that moment um being the man sometimes you do have to be the one to break and not to hold so strong to your stance you know sometimes it's like you're a man you have to hold strong to what you feel and you know I'm the one that's right and I think that's the issue I'm the one that's right is the issue for both of them and one of them just to say I have to say well I'm sorry babe I, I'm sorry you feel that way what can I do what can we do to resolve this at the end of the day that's really the question that needs to be asked and otherwise they're going to keep going in circles and bumping heads and you know hopefully they can come to a resolution because like he said his brother Jared is not going to be there all the time. All right. James and Natalia, they are in Indonesia. He's relocated there because of her health issues. And they've are, they've been married, I think, for about three years. But he, he's only been there for six weeks in Indonesia. He says it's rough. The parents are controlling. They really have no love life, no intimacy in the house, which sounds very understandable no privacy i'm sure either um they don't really have a lot of money and they're still trying to figure out how to earn money there um in two weeks they're going to have their second marriage uh and the dad is kind of controlling everything and how the wedding should be set up it's a big wedding that he's trying to put together and they're not he's not really listening to them saying hey we don't have the money so they're stressed about the money for this this wedding coming up and um it's a lot of pressure and we catch them trying on some of their traditional wedding outfits excuse me and she says you know he looks good in anything she's very complimentary to her husband um but he's like to me I, I really didn't like his response to um what he was what he was wearing he said well at least i have uh, some air for my family jewels because <laughs> it was you know it's like more of a robe type outfit so there's no pants so he's like i'm wearing a dress with a bucket on my head and i thought he actually looked really nice and i think that the clothing and the outfits and the garb that they wear um especially for this ceremony looked very good on him it did look very to me i thought it was beautiful i thought it was fine i know someone that's american would probably find it a little bit different but i just found it a little bit disrespectful he said it's weird and i don't like the way that he called it a dress and a bucket on his head i just felt like he was very disrespectful to the culture by describing it that way um i really didn't like that uh that that says something to me on the level of respect he has for that culture generally um they did have a wedding and but it was during covid 
a lot of people weren't able to attend because of those COVID restrictions. And now dad is pushing this big lavish wedding and they really don't have the money for it. So I can understand the pressure when it comes to that. And she's like, well, they're kind of discussing their issues while they're in their outfits, trying on their outfits and what they're gonna wear. And she's asking, well, why can't you help with the banana chips until we find some work or we can get off of our feet or something or get on our feet and she, anything would help but it just seems like he's complaining and saying the banana chips isn't going to help they're just kind of staying in the house until they figure things out so if he can just pitch in into the family income by doing the banana chips i mean it's just kind of like doing some work around the house to help be supportive and not just sitting there and she feels like he should be able to at least do that right and i agree with that she says, you know, you need to respect the culture, learn the language and all of that. You still haven't learned the language. So you're just chilling in the house. You're not helping with the banana chips. You're not learning the language. And you're just sitting there complaining about how we can't make enough money. So she's like, basically try, you know, for him, he says money's very important. It makes him look bad if he's not bringing any money. He has a very Americanized thought process on money. Um, and the family definitely is not, they're not money driven, but of course it takes money to do some of these lavish things they want to do or even just some everyday things. But, you know, he's very Americanized as far as his thought process on money and basically looking at how people are going to look at him as his big deal. He says he doesn't belong here. He wants to go back and, you know, um, they do have a jewelry business together and um, they did sell some in the U.S. and everybody wants some from the U.S. but no one wants anything from Indonesia. They've gone to different stores to try to put their jewelry there but they feel like the people are thinking it's going to take away from their sales of their items. So they're not doing really good with their jewelry business and they're not able to ship it all the way to the U.S. because the cost will be so expensive. So again, he wants to go back. She's saying, you know, before I went to the U.S., I was a data scientist. But the country that's really hiring that, well, I'm not, I don't know if it's called country or CD or whatever it may be called there. But that area where most of the jobs are, it's a nine hour drive. And the cost of living is high in that area. And her salary would just not be enough alone. Um, so that's really not going to be the best option. Um, again, he wants to go back and she says, you know, I lasted three years in the, in the U S you can't last three months here. She's like, we could try to make it work. Could you at least make a little bit more of an effort? So I'm like total in total agreement with her. Like, I feel like he should definitely make more of an effort. If you really want something to work, you'll make it work. If you want to go back to the U.S., you'll find a reason to go back to the U.S. And that's what he's found. She's like, my health is better here. I'm not going back. She's like, you can go back. I'm not going back. He's like, well, you know, we're supposed to do things together. You're not just supposed to leave me out in the lurch. But maybe he should go back, earn some money, and come back with it. If that's his big deal and big issue and big hang-up, then why not do things that way and come back with a nice stash and stay with his wife up there in indonesia i don't know he can figure something out it's just again if you really want to do something you're gonna make it work you're gonna make it happen so i think natalia or tata has a really good point so what are you guys thoughts on this situation scenario are they better off separate is their love for their own country bigger than their love for each other what are your thoughts? Comments, email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com. That's cbiztv at yahoo.com. And all the best. Let's talk some more next time. God bless. Faith, love, and trends. This is Irene.